Matthew Henson. Have you heard of him? He was born August 8, 1866, to African-American sharecropper parents. His parents died while he was a child, and he left school, became a dishwasher, and at age 12, he met a sea captain who was impressed with how bright the young fellow was, and uh, he hired him on as a cabin boy. He was like the father that Matthew Henson never had. He taught the boy how to read, how to write, and how to navigate as they traveled um, along the coast down to South America and back. Matthew became quite adept at navigation techniques. Well, the ship's captain died and Matthew was on his own again. He moved to Washington, D.C., got a lowly job there. But somehow, while there, he met the great Robert Perry. Robert Perry was one of the heroes of the world in those days and was leaving on a trip to see if they could cut a canal through, I think, Nicaragua. And he was so impressed with the navigation skills and the information that this young fellow had that he hired him on as his personal valet. They made very several journeys and then an epic journey in 1895 to Greenland. And they ended up trapped in the Arctic ice all winter long. They nearly died. They ended up eating their sled dogs and they had to hunker down and stay with some Inuit guides all through the long winter. During that time, here's a young man who had probably a fifth grade education, but he learned the Inuit language. I think the first American to learn the Inuit language, which was a very complicated, very different language. And uh, he also learned how to make kayaks and how to uh, make igloos and so on. And Perry realized this was the young man he needed to take with him if he was going to fulfill his personal dream, which was to be the first man at the North Pole. So eventually they made this journey. I think it was in 19, I'm not sure, 1909, something like that, 1908. They made the journey. And, uh, when they got close to the North Pole, Perry was so exhausted he couldn't go on. And so Matthew Hansen took the flag, and he actually was the first man at the North Pole and planted the flag there. And uh, this was very disconcerting to Perry. I have a little a paragraph here. Think of the journey itself. It was absolutely epic. It's not just walking across a flat piece of ice. Uh, In 1908, they began their final shot at reaching the northernmost point of the planet. The two mushed north with 49 Inuit, more than 200 dogs, 70 tons of whale blubber, uh, what's for breakfast, and countless sleds full of supplies. Across yawning crevices and overtowering glaciers, in the face of howling winds, endless night, and temperatures that plunged to 65 degrees below zero. Well, as I say, um, Matthew Hens had made it first. And when he got back to get Perry, uh, the captain was livid that his valet had planted the flag first and from that moment on f- refused to speak to him. Matthew Henson later said that the North Pole was the place where his heart was broken. Well, they returned 1909. Perry returned to a hero's welcome. Everybody cheering him on, all sorts of fetes and celebrations. But largely, Matthew Henson was forgotten. Um, He died in 1955, which was, I was a five-year-old boy at the time, four-year-old boy. But finally, in 1988, during the days of Ronald Reagan, permission was granted to make an exception to transfer his body and his wife's body from their resting place to Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors for the heroics in 
reaching the North Pole. And he was posthumously awarded, the same year, awarded the Hubbard Medal from the National Geographic. It's their highest honor. Unfortunately, it was just 33 years too late after he was long dead. But I was thinking of the scripture, Revelation 22, verse 12. Jesus says, And behold, I am coming quickly or suddenly, and my reward is with me to give to every one according to his work. And this little book has this remarkable statement. God sees everything, forgets nothing, and rewards what others miss. It may be that you're hidden away in some ministry, working with children perhaps, or talking to your neighbors, raising children for God in the home. You may have a quiet ministry that no one else seems to notice. But the same one who noticed the two mites cast into the treasury, the same one who said that this woman that wiped his feet with her hair and, and anointed him, that, that this story would be told throughout history wherever the gospel was preached. This one doesn't miss a thing. And every kindness and every word of encouragement and every attempt at evangelism, whatever it might be, the Lord takes notice. And he never forgets. And he has said, I will in that day when I return, I will make sure that everyone is rewarded for what he's done. So be encouraged. Don't worry about the applause of the world now. Let them have their parties. Let them have their celebrations. We can wait for that day when the Lord rewards his people for what they have done for him. <music> 